Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to grow squash from sowing to harvesting. This was actually the first time I've grown squash but it was a success, so you don't need years of practice if you want to grow your own. Like pumpkins they take a bit more space but are straightforward to grow and aren't bothered by many pests. The first step is to fill a cell tray with either a sewing compost or a fine all-purpose compost. You can also mix your own sewing compost and I use a 50-50 ratio of topsoil and all-purpose or homemade compost. Don't worry too much though as the seeds will germinate in pretty much anything you have. We want to make sure that there's no air pockets in the cells, as this will reduce the growing space and the cell will fall apart when we try to remove it later. Remove the air pockets from the cells by gently pressing your fingers into each cell. These seeds will not germinate unless the soil is fully saturated, so the next step is to water this tray thoroughly. This can be done in two ways. Either sit the whole tray in a tub, add some water, and wait for the tray to soak in as much as it can, or by simply watering the tray a few times. I grew this early butternut variety this year, and as you can see, the seeds are quite large. Normally you would sow a couple of seeds per cell to ensure you have a good germination rate, but as you don't get many in a packet, sow one per cell by lying the seed on its side. Next, cover the seeds with a little more of your compost so the seeds stay nice and damp for germination. Give them another water and pop in your labels. This now needs to go somewhere warm to germinate, like a windowsill or, as I'm doing here, a greenhouse or a grow tent. So the sowing happened in week one. By week two, we can see that not much has happened yet. The seeds can take a couple of weeks to germinate, so I'm not too surprised. Week three also shows nothing happening yet. I'm starting to wonder if I had a duff packet of seeds. Oh, okay, it's fine. By week 4 we can see the full germination across all cells, and the seedlings have shot up. They were sown at the same time as my pumpkin seeds which are growing at the same rate, so if you were growing both this year the timings are quite similar. These seedlings will very quickly run out of space, so they're going to be transplanted right away. Pick a large spot for your squash plants to grow on. I have a free spot here in my sunny border, and aim to get 3-4 to four plants growing here. These plants will vine, and can be trained up structures to save on floor space. I'm going to let them vine over the lawn to save space. Make sure the seedlings are well watered, as this will make it easier to remove them from the tray. Take a pencil and poke each seedling out using the hole in the bottom of the tray. Next, take a dibber or a tool handle and make a hole in the soil which is the same width and depth as the seedling's root ball. Then drop the seedling into the hole and gently press down at the sides. Lastly, water thoroughly. The roots need to be washed down into the hole and the surrounding soil needs to be damp for the roots to want to explore and spread. Water these seedlings once a day for the next week. The seedlings are growing on nicely and have had a water once a day while they establish into their new home. And by week 6 we can see the seedlings have now settled in and started to throw out new leaves. The leaves are now growing larger and larger. 
Mine have been nibbled a little by birds. I'm not going to worry too much, and next year I just won't grow the squash right under my bird feeder. The plants are now starting to double in size each week and produce more and more leaves. Keep them well watered as, on very sunny days, the leaves can wilt if the soil is dry. By week 9, if we look closely, we can see the flowers and vines starting to develop. As with most plants, as soon as you see flowers or fruits, start to water them with a liquid feed once a week until they're harvested. Week 10 shows the plants get into their maximum height, and they've filled their growing area. Now is the time to expect the vines to start creeping out from the foliage. These plants have grown to a really healthy size, and it's always a good idea to grow plants as close together as you can. As you can see here, the large leaves are protecting the soil from the sun, which means you have to water less, and you'll see fewer weeds. Check in at the start of week 12, we can see the vines making their merry way across the lawn. Many flowers blooming. And even the start of a fruit on this vine. Over the next few weeks, the fruits will start to swell. The plants are now using a lot of water to develop these fruits. If you can, check the soil each day to make sure it's not drying out. Other than continuing to liquid feed once a week, there's not much else you need to look for at this stage. Fruit splitting can happen when you have long periods of hot, dry weather, followed by periods of very wet weather. The skin of the fruit toughens during the heat and swells quickly during the wet weather, causing the skin to split. This happened for us this year. So long as nothing nasty gets in there, the fruit will still be fine as they have a way of sealing themselves back up. The only way I know of combating this is ensuring good watering during the hot days. The fruit will continue to swell and ripen over the next few weeks. Be on the lookout for any slugs eating your fruit, and by turning the fruit every few days you can deter anything from making a meal out of your hard work. I'm really happy with how these plants are growing. Each one has a couple of good sized fruits, though I would probably have more if I was more vigilant on the watering. And by week 18, once they've taken on this creamy colour, some are ready to harvest. Harvest the crops that are ready, so the plant can put its energy into the remaining fruits. Harvesting is straightforward, simply cut the fruit away from the vine like so. This can now be left outside on a few sunny days to ripen up for storage, or cook with it right away. And there you go, squash in just 18 weeks. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing as it really helps me to make the best quality videos I can, and if you have any advice for others growing their own squash, please pop them down in the comments so we can all learn and grow together. And here are a few other videos that I've done which you may be interested in. See you again soon and happy growing.